after having an overall discussion about the non-aligned movement we now come to trace its various achievements and then answer a very crucial question how relevant is the non-aligned movement in this day and age let's start with the achievements of nam being led by prominent leaders of the third world the non-aligned movement quickly became the instinctive response of the third world nations against the superpower hegemony of the bipolarized cold war world not only that it also rose up as a platform to preserve the sovereignty and the newly acquired independence of its member nations and to also unite them against various socio and political evils Finally the non-aligned movement continues to present new ways to preserve world peace and to safeguard international harmony therefore let us now see some of the key achievements of the non-aligned movement in its various decades of operation the first key achievement of the non-aligned movement is that it enjoys participation of nations from all over the world currently the non-aligned movement enjoys a participation of 120 members in fact this is not a static number every single summit new members are added to the non-aligned movement because we remember in 1961 in its first summit there were only 25 members of nam but now we currently stand at 120 members and these members are not just restricted to one single region of the world and they span across multiple continents and several regions such as from africa asia latin america and also eastern Europe as you can see in this particular map so we can understand that the nam truly is a representative of the third world and it also has 17 observer nations which you can see in the map shaded in the color light blue alongside its existing members nam also has 17 observer nations which are most of the major nations of the world as you can see in this particular map shaded in the color light blue therefore nam also has good cooperation with all the major nations of the world can you answer this question how many countries are presently the members of nam is it 125 120 126 or 127 the correct answer is there are currently 120 members of the non-aligned movement Now the non-aligned movement was incepted in order to safeguard the sovereignty and the newly found independence of various Afro-Asian nations who became its initial members. Now these nations all had a shared history of being victims of imperialism and colonialism and therefore the foundational objective of NAM became opposition to any forms of colonialism and imperialism. And this NAM had done for several decades by raising a collective voice against the imperialist domination of major powers this nam has done in 1956 during the suez crisis in which uk made its allies in the middle east invade its former colony egypt as well as and nam also did this during the us invasion of iraq in the year 2003 when us unilaterally invaded the country of iraq without any international cooperation or without raising a general consensus Now, NAM was also founded to be an answer for the third world nations against the bloc politics of the Cold War. And this the movement did by presenting all these third world nations with a third option in the Cold War. To stay non-aligned and not to be involved in either of these blocs or their spheres of influence. And by doing this and also in mediating between the two blocs, NAM played a very crucial role in bringing the Cold War to an end. We can see in this article. which says that cold war ends as berlin wall's significance falls so when the berlin wall fell the cold war officially came to an end many historians believe we already have seen the end of the cold war and also how crucial the berlin wall was in the cold war in previous chapters but we can now understand that nam played a very crucial role in the end of the cold war but despite its end nam still continues in easing tensions between major powers and also in in keeping third world nations outside of the bounds of the major powers because whenever the major powers feel like they want to consolidate power their eyes still fall on the third world nations and therefore these third world nations are still protected by the non-aligned movement and this remains a very key achievement of it 
Now, in almost all of its summits, NAM had advocated the need for economic development and also in building a sustainable infrastructure for the third world nations. And this it does by pushing for a new international economic order or an NIEO, in which NAM urges the major nations of the world in rethinking the entire idea of how the economic model should be through which third world nations no longer would be dependent on the West and they can focus on their own development and can improve their own agricultural and industrial infrastructure and finally be in a condition in which they can use their own resources for the benefits of their own people. NAM was also founded with the objective of ending all forms of discrimination, especially racial discrimination. And NAM took up the stance of opposing the worst form of racism that there ever has been, which is apartheid. Now, apartheid, if you remember, refers to the racist regime in South Africa under the control of a minority European government, which treated the majority African population as subhumans. This NAM considered to be the worst form of racism possible and therefore raised its collective voice against this racist regime and also lobbied to the United Nations for imposing various forms of economic sanctions on the oppressive government so they can understand that this racism cannot go on any longer. Now NAM in turn helped push for the abolition of apartheid and this happened when Nelson Mandela became the president of South Africa in the year 1994. Nelson Mandela was a key figure in the anti-apartheid movement and he also became the first person of African origin to be a president of South Africa, thus bringing the practice and the concept of apartheid to an end and in this NAM played a very crucial role. Now, While we saw many of the key achievements of the non-aligned movement, the question still stands. Is the non-aligned movement relevant in the contemporary world? Is there a need for NAM any longer? Let's try to answer that now. Now we just mentioned that NAM played a crucial role in bringing the Cold War to an end. But NAM was particularly incepted to be a response of the third world nations to the Cold War bloc politics. Then does the end of the Cold War not make NAM irrelevant? Absolutely not. This is because the non-line movement was initiated with an aim of combating the conditions of Cold War, not the Cold War itself. Because Cold War presented the third world nations with many issues and problems. There was a surge of neocolonialism. There also was a loss of their sovereignty and independence at stake. And these conditions of the Cold War still exist because Nam believes that while the Cold War is over, Cold War thinking still survives and major nations still target and prey upon third world nations to increase their spheres of influence and also their power. And therefore, NAM still has to exist as a platform for these nations to be protected from the conditions of the Cold War, which still exists despite the end of the Cold War itself. Now we have discussed many objectives of the non-aligned movement previously and especially we have seen many objectives centered around the development of third world nations and also in providing them a bigger role in the international sphere. And these objectives, instead of becoming irrelevant in the post-Cold War era, actually becomes much more relevant because in the post-Cold War era, the third world nations finally have a chance to increase their development and to also focus on themselves and to also rise up in the international sphere without worrying about Cold War bloc politics. And for this, NAM still has to stick around. Now over here we see a map of the third world nations in the post-Cold War era. The countries in green refer to those nations that are usually considered to be third world and the countries in yellow are referred to be the nations that are sometimes considered to be third world. Whatever may be the case, the map already shows us that this is a majority population of the world and for their development, NAM still has to exist. Given its large membership, we already can understand that the movement still continues to act as a representative of the third world nations. In fact, this list of members is continuously updating and therefore the list of nations which rely on the NAM 
to be their representative is also increasing and not only is nam supposed to be the representative it also is supposed to be a testament of their overall international confidence because due to nam's existence these third world nations can focus on their own development without worrying or without having any concern of being dragged into the conflicts of major powers because they know that nam would be their guardian angel so nam still provides his third world nations a balance in the international sphere and all the member nations and their leaders can exude international confidence keeping in mind that the nam is there to make sure that they are well represented and their case would not be forgotten in fact this discussion we currently are having the non line movement is aware of it not the exact discussion but the overall concern of the world at the non line movement is currently an irrelevant body or a movement and that is why nam understands the need to reform itself and to also update itself with the changing time and therefore keeps on changing its focus areas as well as its many objectives so that it could have an overall bigger impact in the world so as the times are changing various issues become more and more important and nam also chooses these to be the focus areas instead of having a static list of objectives so the recent key areas when nam is currently focusing upon is in opposing neo colonialism in pushing for disarmament as well as for upholding human rights and we already have seen these while discussing the various objectives of the movement so we can therefore say that the non aligned movement continues to be a relevant crucial and irreplaceable part of the developing world's existence and that itself is the relevance of nam nam is still continuously adding on more members to it and these members still consider the nam to be their one and true representative so needless to say that itself is a testament to the relevance of the non aligned movement So that brings us to the end of the discussion surrounding the non-aligned movement a discussion that started with understanding the origins of the movement understanding the meaning of non-alignment itself as well as seeing or meeting the various key architects of the movement itself then we went on to see the factors behind the rise of the movement and also understanding what its various objectives were then we saw the role of a very crucial member of the non aligned movement or a very key architect of it jawahar lal nehru and we ended by seeing the various achievements of the movement as well as understanding how relevant the movement is in the current day and age don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the deltastep app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests get all your doubts resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy it is rewarding too So register for free now